What is so frustrating, speaking of heat, including to more rational global warming believers, is that there is a solution staring us in the face. An important part of the solution to cutting our carbon dioxide emissions without sending the economy into a tailspin. It is so maddening when you get dunces like President Joe Biden's climate envoy John Kerry blathering the other day that half the cuts will actually be made by things that no one can actually think of at the moment. Here's a reality for you and for anybody who's thinking about the rapidity of this transition. I am told by scientists, not by anybody in politics, but by scientists, that 50 percent of the reductions we have to make to get to net zero by 2050 or 2045, as soon as we can, 50 percent of those reductions are going to come from technologies that we don't yet have. That's just a reality. Wakey, wakey, anyone heard of nuclear power, which we have already, safe, reliable, 24-7 electricity, supplies 70% of France's electricity, no carbon dioxide emissions. So if you really want green electricity that you can obviously uh, rely on to actually be there, nuclear power. But then you get all the scares and the but, 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 uh, nuclear power is dangerous. In fact, it's the last nuclear power station to kill people with radiation explosion was Chernobyl. 35 years ago, dated design, and the known death toll there was fewer than 100 people, much fewer. But the scaremongers have been so frantic that building a new reactor now is almost impossible. All the safety regulations and all the tests with every new design and the cost from building these giant things from scratch. Bah, in the teeth of all that community campaign, too much. But there may now be a breakthrough. Rolls-Royce makes cars, has put together a consortium that wants to build cheap new modular nuclear power stations. You know, sort of like prefab, factory built basically, not huge but pretty standard, so you don't have to actually build a whole new one on site. It's all off the rack. But to drive down the costs, this consortium needs to raise $550 million on top of the 400 mil that the British government has promised. I spoke earlier to the consortium chief, Tom Sampson. Tom Sampson, thank you so much for joining me. Nuclear power is actually banned in Australia, but if we're serious about cutting emissions with without smashing the electricity system, isn't nuclear power exactly what you would need? I think, yeah, you're absolutely right, Andrew. Nuclear power is a great way to help stabilise a grid that becomes more and more dependent on higher levels of renewable. Um, but nuclear power has to be cost-competitive to, to have a role to play, and that's what we focus on developing at Rolls-Royce, a low-cost and deliverable nuclear solution that can attract investment. But what about the danger that anti-nuclear journalists have been talking about for decades? Yeah? And what about the nuclear waste? Well, for example, here in the UK, the cost of electricity for nuclear includes uh, all the costs necessary to deal with the, the liability and the decommissioning of the waste. So we fully account for that in our economics. Uh, we've learned the lessons from the past in that regard. And now we have a, a, an element of our tariff for the power includes a funded decommissioning plan fully deals with all the legacy costs of the waste. And I think we're probably one of the few industries and in maybe the only industry in the world that fully accounts for that uh, liability and waste element within its economics and as part of its industry. Uh, and if only if only we had done something similar with the fossil fuel industry in the last five or six decades, we wouldn't be necessarily facing this climate crisis today. But uh, the nuclear waste, is it a problem uh, for, you know, thousands and thousands of years to come? Well, we have to manage it. We have to manage it properly. Uh, for one of our units, which is about 470 megawatts, over the life of a single asset, which is 60 years, the waste that that single unit would generate would fill up a, a swimming pool, a normal, traditional Olympic-sized swimming pool. So that's, that's the scale of the leg legacy waste issue from this technology. Uh, and we have many measures in place in the UK, and there are global standards for how that waste is then stored and managed uh, and dealt with. We're in the UK implementing a long-term geological disposal facility that will keep and manage the waste for, for a long time. Now, another objection I hear from politicians who don't really want to uh, have this problem on their in-tray is, yes, 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 but the cost of building a nuclear power plant is enormous. Uh, and that's in part because of the time it takes to get approvals and then the time to build one. 
uh, it takes maybe 10 years, more. What is the advantage of your design? Uh, absolutely, Andrew. Our design has specifically focused on de delivering a low-cost solution. We started this process back in 2015, and we're not just a nuclear reactor technology company. We're developing a fully integrated factory-built nuclear power plant. And by driving the activity into a factory, by producing a commoditized product, we drastically reduce the construction risk and change it from a large complex infrastructure program, which a lot of the large nuclear programs are, into a commoditized factory built product. That radically changes the, the cost profile, makes our projects much more deliverable with confidence through that factory process. And in Rolls Royce, we've got a long heritage of uh, building nuclear technology in our submarine and defense business. We've got a great heritage and manufacturing excellence and by combining those two experiences together with our consortium partners on civils who try to then maximize the civil activity into modular factories as well we've matched and ra we've radically reduced the construction risk profile create a lower cost product that with that factory commoditized approach can attract investment so it's a completely different way of approaching how you can deliver nuclear power and hopefully it will open up nuclear power to lots of companies who Hitherto, would not have considered nuclear as part of their clean energy transition.